Okay. Yeah, so this is Contradiction. Uh, it's a FMV. It's kind of like Phoenix Wright. Uh, the mics are live? Uh, yeah, mics are live. Audio's live. We're live. We're live. We're live. All right. Yeah, so this is FMV. It's kind of like Phoenix Wright. So what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to be talking to people. Um, I'm going to be moving so fast you might get confused that this is a movie, but not. this is a video game. And uh, I'm going to be matching up certain uh, sentences to each other, and you know we're going to go fast. Uh, I also give you a spoiler. This is uh, this is a comfy run. No hype allowed. There's there's no hype going on. Yes. <laughs> I'm making a rule for the, this run that if you say hype, you are banned yes. from the event. Except for that instance. Yes. Yeah. Um, the other thing is I haven't run this in a while, so I'm running off of notes. <laughs> So if I fumble a bit, uh, don't 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 judge me. It is yeah, it's a tool assistance speeder. Are you guys ready? Three, two, one, let's go. Who here up for real NASA hours? Alright. So something very important just happened. I did not make the sticky notes uh, soft lock onto the screen and block it. Always everything. nice to randomly find the yeah, key so on the, the first, floor. Yeah, we're going to find this key randomly on the floor. It's <laughs> nice. I know. It's amazing. Very trusting, leaving a bike unlocked. Most of this game's budget went into its Looks realistic, like uh, homebrew equipment. you know, 3D simulator. <laughs> I can't even tell that it's ah. not a camera. This might come in handy. Yeah, so, uh, Detective Inspector Jinx will do this a lot. He'll just steal people's shit. <laughs> he's just, he's super It might come in so. handy in his defense. It might, yeah. Colin, <laughs> who, uh, oh, I can follow who made a bunch of NES games, stuck between music the back in the day, well, and, um, truly wedged in. he's a really big music guy. A lot of people appreciate his music. Lo lo yeah, oh, after like NES, too, he did a lot of stuff. Good stuff, too. And he made this, and it's like, you you should get this. It's fucking amazing. Oh, I, sorry. No, I'm not talking on the mic. <laughs> Hold on. What is the freaking button to do it? Hold on. I'm confused. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> I didn't remember how to use items, okay? I told you not to judge me. There's items okay, in this yeah. game. Yeah, it it's kind of tricky. Interesting. I thought forensics had checked the whole area. <laughs> see, not very well. I know now. I know now. I told you, there'd be fumbling. All right. So we got some, some stuff. Now we can actually go talk to some people. Is it Simon? Uh, yeah. Detective Inspector Jenks, I'm investigating an incident in the village. Could I come in and ask you a few questions, please? Um, yeah. Thank you. You can't skip cutscenes unless you've seen them already. Uh, we can just go through here if you want. Uh, Emma's working in the front room. Hi. Uh, this is Inspector Jenks. Jenks. What's all this about? There was a death in the village. <laughs> Kate Vine, I believe you both knew her. Yeah. Do you need to speak to both of us? Uh, I'll just speak to Simon first, if that's okay. Just come through. <laughs> Is it okay in here? Oh, this will be fine, yeah. Do you want anything? Water? No, 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 I won't be long. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, um, we did say we would talk to Simon first, but... Uh, yeah, we're not Thank you. Probably we're be back later. To... <laughs> Don't worry, it's only a few questions. <laughs> We gotta talk to yeah. Emma first, so. Alright, so first, we gotta talk about Kate. When was the last time you saw Kate Vine? It was last Thursday in the college library. Um, I saw her and we chatted for a bit. She seemed her usual self. What was her usual self? Oh, just Kate being Kate. You know, a bit wild. Wild? In what way wild? <laughs> Oh, she just used to question everything, you know. Have arguments with the lecturers, things like that. What else? Kate had a drink problem. How uh, noticeable was that? Well, it wasn't at first, but 
As the year went on, she'd be drunk in the afternoon. But I think she cut down, you know, towards the end of college and when she started her PhD. Now I ask her about this. Ever seen this? <laughs> Looks like, uh... That's my old necklace. I gave this to Kate. So Kate might have been wearing it last Friday. Yeah, well, perhaps, but I can't see why. She was always buying new things, you know, lots of jewellery, stuff like that. It's meant to be a bird in cage, but the cage's fallen off. Oh, I'll show you. Where did you buy the it? Are really I didn't. Some wanted <laughs> present. Secret admirer? Mm, not so secret. I see. That's how it should have looked. It's called a freedom necklace. You mind if I keep this? No, not at all. So I'll the necklace Emma did belong now. to Kate. Interesting. I'm starting to wish I'd brought a spare evidence back. But we're going to throw shit out of her eventually. You'll see. You know what this is? Yeah. Yeah, I think Emma had one like it. Actually, you know what? Kate had one. I remember because I asked her about it one night when we were all out drinking. In college. I was probably pretty drunk. That's what college is all about. All right, so I just selected my first contradiction, the first... We gotta talk about her death. When was the last time you saw Kate Vine? Um, so last Friday's meeting, I think. Did you see her after the meeting? No. How long have you known Kate? That would be when we started Atlas. Three months ago. Did you socialize outside Atlas? No. How would you describe her? Uh, what sort of person was she? Well, she's talented. Uh, she was full of life, you know? Sharp, quite sharp. Would you say she had any emotional problems? She, her mood, her mood could change. And, well, there was the drinking problem. When did you become aware of that? Well, she would come drunk to a meeting sometimes. She would reek of the stuff. I mean, everyone knew, but nobody really said anything. So, tell me a bit about Atlas. Oh, it's just a business management training <laughs> program for postgrads. And you started this after you left college? Uh, yeah. And it's on every Friday? Yeah. I yeah, well, my day. group isn't doing it this Friday, but uh, uh, one of the groups is. Group okay. Yeah. All right, before I match up this contradiction, I'm going to ask him about the uh, bottles out there I first. noticed a lot of bottles outside. Are they yours? Yeah, I'm at homeroom. For yourself? Well, no, I give it out to my friends and stuff. I tried selling it at first, but I didn't have any takers. Except for James over at Farmhouse. I, I used to trade it to him for, for herbs and stuff. Do you see James a lot? No, not really. Ooh. Okay. Aha! <laughs> so how did you know Kate was wearing a freedom necklace 18 months ago? At college. Well, I, I knew Kate at college, but I, I didn't get to know her till, till we started Atlas. Right. So you didn't socialise with her at college? No. And you didn't socialise with her outside of Atlas? Uh, no. You didn't see her outside Atlas at all? Um... No. No. <laughs> no not at all. So Simon did know Kate at college, but why would he lie about that? Maybe he knows Kate better than he's willing to admit. Six o'clock. I wonder if Rebecca's working in the pub tonight. A broken window. Recently smashed by the look of it. Might have to ask about that. Yeah, that key we found earlier. Hey, what do you know? Yeah. This is uh, completely, you know, common in British police law. I wonder whose mask this is. Rebecca's? Orion's. 
<laughs> we'll just keep that. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with stealing if you're the law. I am the law. Alright, now we'll go talk to Rebecca. Can I get you? Detective Inspector Jenks. Rebecca, is it? Yeah. Mm. There's been an uh, incident in the village. I'm conducting an investigation. Could I ask you a few questions, please? Right. Come through. Thank you. What's it about? There's been an unexplained death locally. Not sure if you've heard. The student? Yes. Yes, it was dreadful news. You're married to Ryan, one of the Atlas leaders, yes? I suppose I am, yes. Well, I just wanted to ask a few questions about Kate and Atlas, if that's okay. I don't know if I'll be able to answer any of them, but sure. How did the window get broken out round the back? I don't actually know. Um, someone said two girls were arguing outside. I found out after they'd gone. And when was this? Last Friday, just after we opened, about half past six. I taped over it until I can get it fixed. We don't want people getting cut and suing us. Does that sort of thing happen a lot? Arguments? No, not really. I'm quite strict when it comes to borrowing clients. I don't think are um, suitable. Did you know Kate? Not very well. So one of the she cool things with the menu is she was quite a moody contradiction and then go on to something else. Person. Like the next, you know, sentence. You could tell she had problems. When was the last time you saw her? Friday. She popped in for a minute. And when was that? Uh, seven-ish. Was she on her own? I didn't see who she was with. She put twenty pounds on the bar and then left. What was that for? A breakage, presumably. Twenty pounds. Just for a beer glass? Well, she was very drunk. She just put it on the bar and then walked out. Was there a broken glass? Not that I noticed. But she was a strange girl. Aha! <laughs> so, you said Kate gave you £20 for a breakage, but you didn't have a breakage. That's right. Do you think the payment could have been for the broken window? Could it have been Kate who was arguing? Well, I suppose it could have been, yeah. It could have been Kate, you're probably right, yeah. But you don't know who she was arguing with? No, I'm not sure. I'll ask around. Realising Kate had broken the window, Rebecca really should have worked that out before now. Unless she did. But why would she lie about that? Now we're gonna go find James. Frickin' stoner. <laughs> <laughs> the best part is notice there's nothing inside his. I'm a Cooper police thing, officer. You know? Detective Inspector Jenks. They couldn't afford any. It's all right. You can carry on if you want to. Just go in. <laughs> I'm investigating a, a death in the village, Kate Vine. Mm -hmm. There was a death recently. Hello, in the... a new one. Well, could I ask you a few questions, please? A bit dark. Well, if you give me your name and address, I'll come later on. Where do you live? Borough House. And what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Reminder, Jinx is based as fuck. Right. According to the map, Abbey Farm is across the road there. frames with black painted glass. Very interesting. Yeah, we'll just take that. <laughs> All right.
Could I ask you a few more questions, please? Didn't take you long. Haven't got much time. Just close the doors, shall I? Where do you want to sit? Oh, anywhere is fine. I uh, didn't quite catch your name. James. Sit there. Thank you, James. <laughs> Why are you asking me about Kate Pye? Routine. You know Simon, don't you? Thompson. Why, what did he say? That <laughs> you all went to college together, you and Kate. Is that right? Might have done. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough. Now, what's all this stuff in the workshop? Paint and stencils and things like that? Just a little sideline of mine. Oh, you do picture framing. They're black mirrors. Scrying mirrors. Now, what's a scrying mirror? <laughs> Show you one if you want. <laughs> scrying goes back centuries. The ancient Persians did it. This country pagans still practice it. The fortune tellers pretend to do it. That's what the crystal ball's all about. It's all scrying. The mirror's just one way of doing it. What is scrying? Depends who you are. People do it for different reasons. What sort of reasons? Exploring your mind. Clearing your mind. Communicating with the dead. Is that what you use them for, James? Communicating with the dead? And they make them for other people these days. And there's a market for these, is there? Lots of people want to talk to the dead. Even if they don't believe in it. Do you make a profit on them? I don't do it for the money. How very charitable of you. Can I keep this? Keep it. Thank you. And I don't know if James is watching uh, TV or if it's just like... And who he comments? just always looks off to the side. I wonder what else James is into. A few more questions, if you don't mind. Have a look at this. Know anything about that? I haven't seen this one, but it looks a lot like an atlas mask. Uh, we use them for some of the um, some of the workshops and stuff. Really? How? <laughs> well, you um, you have to say something uh, boastful or uh, or arrogant. You do it first without the mask, and then you say it with a mask. And the point is. Well, it's easier when you have the mask on, isn't it? People are not as afraid to be free about themselves. Take a lesson, Anand. What did you find out about Atlas? Well, it was advertised. Um, actually, I think I've still got the... Um... <clears throat> this is the advert that was at my college. Uh, to be honest, I've learned more in three months at Atlas than I did in three years at business school. Can I keep that? Yeah, go for it. I suppose that might this be useful as a conversational starter. To just destroy Emma. So that's what what we're do, do you now. know about Atlas? I know that it's um, it's a business course. I went with Simon when he first went, but it wasn't really my thing. How often did you go? Just the once. And you decided it wasn't for you? Yeah, I'd been to something similar, so I decided it wasn't for me. Have you seen one of these before? Is that from James? Now, what do you know about James? That he's creepy. <sighs> he was selling them last Friday at the market. There's, there's a market every week type thing. And uh, I usually go there for lunch. So you wouldn't buy one of these? No, I wouldn't. But Kate would. Was she uh, into this sort of thing? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think so. She bought one. And, uh, I went round to her flat to try it out. You're meant to see ghosts or spirits or something. It doesn't work. How do you use it? You're just meant to stare into it. Shall I show you? Go ahead. <sighs> okay, so you, you just... You just stare, stare like this. And, uh... Then you see... See what? Sorry, um... 
<laughs> uh, look, uh, you're, you're meant to see a ghost or something. Look, it doesn't work. It didn't work, sir. Did you hear about an argument in the pub last Friday? No, I wasn't there. You weren't in the village? No, I went home last, if you were last in the Thursday village, night, actually, you were pub, to right? see my parents. But you do visit the pub. Oh, but yeah, I mean, I, I know Rebecca quite well. We, we all went there quite a bit after college. Aha. <laughs> so, you went home to see your parents on Thursday night, that right? Uh, yes. But you said you saw James at the market on Friday. He, um, no, I went to, um, I went to see my parents on Friday night. What time did you go on Friday? Um, eight or nine. And you didn't see Kate at all on Friday? No. You're not a very good liar, Emma. <laughs> okay. Playing the smackdown. Get told. At the pub we were arguing. This is only the beginning. What were you arguing about? I, I'd i lent her £50 pounds because she was desperate <laughs> and w we were just arguing. I, I, it didn't really bother me, she just didn't have it. And Kate broke the window? Yes. She she did things like that when she was angry. Smash things? Yes. So it was Emma arguing with Kate, but why didn't she want to admit it? In case it gave her a motive or something else? Aha. Uh -huh. So you lent money to Kate because she was desperate, but she bought loads of jewelry and things. So why were you lending her money? Her well, no, it's because, um... It, well, it's... it wasn't about money, was it, Emma? No. Go on. <laughs> what was it really about? We were arguing because she was going to blackmail Ryan, the guy from Atlas, over an affair he was having and then tell his wife if he didn't give her the money. Ryan's affair with Kate? No, I don't know. I think he was having an affair with another student and Kate found out. And why were you involved? Because I didn't really agree with it. I didn't agree with what she was doing even if he did have an affair. Were you friends with Ryan? No, I'd never met him. You just thought Kate was wrong? Hmm, not sure about this. Emma's either on a moral crusade, or there's another reason she was worried about Kate blackmailing Ryan. Aha! You said you went to an Atlas meeting with Simon? Yes. That's interesting, because I happen to know that Ryan is the main lecturer at Atlas. But you say you never met him. Why did you say you don't know him? Okay, I, I, need, I need to tell you something. I just need to make sure Simon doesn't find out. I won't be telling Simon anything he doesn't have to hear. And you can't tell Rebecca either. Go on. Okay, so the affair that happened was was between Ryan and I. I was having the affair, and Kate knew. So Kate was blackmailing both of you? No, she didn't care about me. It was part of the course, you see, having to take all these risks. She thought it was funny to turn her back on Ryan. She thought I wouldn't care. But you did. Yes, I was already with Simon when Ryan and I, you know, and I didn't want Simon finding out, and Kate thought that he wouldn't, but I didn't want her risking it. And then if Rebecca found out, then Simon would definitely have found out, and then it would have blown up and it would have just been a big mess. And so you just argued and what? Well, she just stormed off and broke a window. And that was it? You didn't see her again that night? No. Are you sure? Yes. I promise. Seven o'clock. So, Ryan's a bit of a Lothario, is he? I think it's time I met this Ryan Rand face to face. There you go. Thank you. It's like this motherfucker. It smells nice. What is that? Uh, chili pork. Oh, no, I hear you're a cook. Oh, no, no, I used to. Used to be more into it. No, I don't do it so much. I used to grow my own herbs and everything. Oh, yeah. 
Um, no. Uh, at the farmhouse where you used to live? Where was that? At? That's where James lives. Yeah, we used to share a house together. The farmer used to let us use a corner of his greenhouse to grow stuff. And you knew James that way? Well, didn't really get on. Where are the greenhouses? Well, it's just through the farmyard at the back. Interesting. Yeah, so that's all we're here for, actually. So we're just gonna leave Be back later on, if that's okay. Best to knock on the window for Emma. Simon always answers the front door. Simon mentioned another greenhouse on the farm. Must be up the hill over there. <laughs> Wasn't locked. <laughs> I wonder if James knows this is here. Don't know what it is, but it'd be interesting to see what he says about it. Alright, this cutscene might skip. We'll see what happens. Nope, it doesn't. What are you? Private eye. Uh, no, I'm a police inspector. Who are you looking for? I'm investigating a death in the village. That student, then. They did one last year, too. Same place. Did what? Found a student. Ask that psycho about it. He runs that business cult thing up at the, the big house. Bunch of nut jobs. Uh, uh, hey, uh, what was the student's name? Liam. something. Or sod. Yeah, so sometimes Atlas's that reputation precedes them. I have no idea why. I think I might call the station. Find out a bit more about this Liam. Good this time. I like how this this uh, scene presents you with an arrow to leave, but you can't Mike, uh, actually Jenks. leave. You can't click, yeah, it. You can't click it with a mouse because it's literally all keyboard this game. Yeah, yeah, it's a point and click adventure game that's all on the keyboard. Listen, are you near a computer? Uh, I can't be. Yeah, go on. Do you know anything about a death last year? Someone called Liam in Edenton Village. Uh, I don't remember it. Hang on, someone. Edenton Village. Uh, yeah, Liam Rogers. That's suicide. Last year. Suicide? I've got two suicides in two years, both on Edenton. Only you've got your work cut out, Chexy. <sighs> yeah, don't I know it? <sighs> right, well, good luck with that, and see you Monday. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mikey. A uh, few more questions, if you don't mind. Oops. What do you know about Liam? You mean Liam who took his life? Liam who took his life. He That's used to play in a band, Black Rock or something. No, Black Stone. Um, very gothic. You usually ask her. I used about to let them play in here sometimes at the weekends. They were quite good. Did you know there was anything wrong? That's okay. I mean, why he might have? No, I, I didn't know him very well. Do you know what these are? Oh, magic mint. Where did you find this? Magic mint? Salvia divinorum. I used to grow it years ago. It makes you trip. In what way? It's a hallucinogenic and legal. Quite a dangerous combination, really. Do you use it? <laughs> Me? <laughs> no, I don't even take medicines. I, um, I like to stay pure. I didn't expect Rebecca to know about growing drugs. I know she claims not to use them herself, but I'm not so sure. Couple more questions, if that's okay. Ever heard of Salvia Divinorum, James? What's that, skin cream? 
<sighs> it's not a skin cream, no. It's a plant. Really? Don't know much about plants. So you've never heard of salvia? No. Did you know Liam? Liam who? Liam who died. <laughs> you mean Liam who killed himself? Yeah. He was in my year, on a different course. What course was Liam on? Can't remember, not mine. What was yours? Plant science. <laughs> First time I knew about Liam was when he killed himself. Right, so you didn't meet him? No. Pretty obvious Wait, contradiction so here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, your degree is in plant science, but you don't seem to know anything about plants. <sighs> well, still got a lot to learn. So you're still <laughs> saying you've never heard of salvia? Didn't say that. So you have. Maybe. And you do grow it? Yeah, it's legal, why not? What do you do with it? I use it for explorative purposes, meditation. And does this involve anybody else? Why? Do you sell it or give it to anybody else? <sighs> sure. Yeah, it's just for me, nobody else. And that's the only drug you grow, is it? Feel free to go and look if you want. It's okay, I'll look later. The only drug he grows? <laughs> Not sure I believe that, James. <laughs> then again, would someone growing illegal drugs bother growing a legal one? Here it is. Have you uh, ever tried Simon's homebrew? Thompson's tar? Yeah, I've tried it. Did he sell it? Well, not to me, not for money anyway. We used to trade stuff. What did you trade? I make a nice herbal tea as it happens. Him and his girlfriend were into it. What was his beer like? Lethal. Strong. Knock your eyes out. Aha. When you say herbal tea, do you mean salvia? Probably. So you <laughs> traded salvia tea with Simon for his homebrew? So? So why did you say you didn't give salvia to anybody else? Did you give it to anybody else? How many people did you give it to? Did you give it to Kate? No. How about Liam? I didn't have anything to do with him dying, if that's what you mean. So you did give him salvia? Yes, sir. I gave him salvia because he asked for it, but that's not what killed him. Well, he committed suicide, James, because of psychological issues that probably weren't helped by him trying hallucinogenic drugs. Didn't commit suicide. You don't know anything about him. You don't know what happened. Okay, so what happened then? Do you even know about Third Eye? Go on. You don't know about Third Eye. You don't know about Third Eye. You know nothing about Liam's death. I mean, forget salvia. Fine, tell me then. Third Eye was a cult. We had our very own psycho cult operating right here from our village hall. And I got rid of them, single-handed. I'm the one who got rid of Third Eye. Did they tell you that at the station? Okay, okay start again. <laughs> they were what? You don't know anything, do you? Look. <laughs> they were reeling in students, pretending to be some sort of happy life course, you know. We can make your life better sort of crap. Then they were putting everyone through this brainwashing program to make them compliant. And selling them on. It's all there. What do you mean, selling them on? Selling them. Objects, commodities. To who? To anyone who could afford them. Top politicians, famous celebrities, wealthy businessmen, you name it. What for? You don't get it, do you? Third Eye were making and selling slaves. They were black market slave traders. They were wiping people's personalities using ECT, brainwashing, cocktails of hard drugs, deliberately turning them into perfect slaves. You know how much slaves are worth on the black market these days? No. Millions. And I'm talking per slave. That's why anyone who stood up to them and threatened to go public like Liam was just killed off. They didn't give a damn. So you're saying Liam was murdered by Third Eye? Exactly what I'm saying. So I started looking into it. <laughs> they were all saying it was suicide, but there's no way. So, did you ever actually meet Liam? I found out about him. And how did you find out about all this other stuff? Well, it's obvious, you can tell. I met some of the students. 
You could see straight away there was something wrong. They were like zombies. And I can tell when someone's got ECT damage or when they've been through mind conditioning. It's just obvious. It's just obvious. The US military used all these techniques back in the 50s. It's oh, all documented. Okay. You can read about it. Yeah. They showed all the same signs. So did you ever actually go to a meeting? No, but I knew what went on. How? From what people said who'd been through it. Okay, so do you know anyone I could speak to who did go through it? Well, no. Look, it doesn't matter. Why did they close down if it wasn't true? They just closed down and disappeared overnight after I put all the flyers up. Bit of a coincidence. But that was just after Liam died. Yeah. And do you think that had anything to do with it? Maybe, but, but it was the flyers that forced them to close. <sighs> okay. Imagine you want to keep this? Yeah, you investigate. It'll all come out. Because of some flyers. Third Eye definitely killed Liam. Well, that was a lot to take in. Does James really believe all this stuff? This is the first I've heard about Third Eye. Question is, what's their connection with Atlas, if there is one? Alright, really strong cutscene coming up here. Oh, oh God, yes. Do you mind not defacing public property, please? What's it to you? Well, I'm a policeman. And that's supposed to make what difference exactly? <laughs> it means that you do exactly what I tell you to do. Or what? Or you arrest me? No, I'll give you a fine this time. So, if I do something that you don't like, I have to give you some money? What happens if you do something that I don't like? You're going to give me some money? Look, I do not have time to discuss it at the moment. Can you just go? <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> Rat. But why would he carve that into a tree? Either he's a die-hard rock fan, or there's more to that symbol than meets the eye. If I did, uh, this, would that mean anything to you? <laughs> Who did you see doing that? Someone in the woods, carving it into a tree. That was Kyle. It, it's a guy from the course, he's an idiot. And where does he? I can't remember, somewhere outside the village? The three fingers thing is something the students started doing. It's something from the course. The uh, the three freedoms. The what? The three freedoms. It's from the course. It's um, a phrase. Free to be free. Free yourself from the things that are holding you back, right? Uh, things that stop you being successful. What are they? There's uh, uh, fear of failure, uh, guilt, and uh, a doubting, uh, a self-doubt. You believe that? Yeah. Guilt ruins lives. It stops you looking forward. It it serves no practical purpose. It's basically destructive. Right. Free to be free. Not the most original slogan. But I wonder how far this freedom goes. Ryan was interviewed in the lounge, according to the report. That must be his office. Ryan! Yes? Detective Inspector Jenks, I'm conducting an investigation in the area. Wouldn't mind asking you a few questions, all right? <sighs> Come in, Inspector. Thank you. No one's ever happy to see Jenks. <laughs> Poor Jenksy. <laughs> <laughs> Drink, Inspector. I'd better not, eh? Mm. So you wanted to speak to me? I believe that uh, Kate Vine was a student at Atlas. <sighs> Kate Vine? Well, yes, she was. All of this has been thoroughly investigated, Inspector. It was suicide. Well, we have reason to believe there may be rather more to it than that. Really? Then, in that case, I'd be prepared to assist in any way possible. 
Thank you. you tell me a bit about the phrase free to be free? <laughs> free to be free, my favourite motto. Well, we teach our students that people, uh, well, they suffer from excessive guilt, don't they? Excessive self-criticism, excessive doubt. Evils of excess, we call them. <laughs> and we tell our students that if they rid themselves of these evils, then they're free to realise their full potential. Who came up with all this? I have a background in psychology. Honestly? Yeah, don't look so surprised, <laughs> Inspector. Uh, there's an intellect lurking in here. When did you come up with the phrase? Uh, when we were based at the village hall. Uh, when I say we, I came up with the phrase. Uh, Dad's more the money man. And very successful at it too, I hear. Oh, he's successful. Uh, but he's not a creative man. Dad suffers from a, a lack of imagination. What do you know about this? Not much. So you've never seen this before? You don't know anything about Third Eye? Well, I don't remember seeing it now. You don't recognize any of the symbols on it? No, sorry. Can you tell me about this? <laughs> Haven't seen that for a while. They had a friend who used to make them for us for the course. He passed away last year. What does the uh, symbol mean? Uh, it's borrowed from paganism. It's the symbol of the triple goddess. The mother, maiden and crone, represented by the waxing and waning of the moon. Uh, it's an ancient symbol. It predates Christianity. Some people say that it dates back to Paleolithic times. And is that uh, relevant to the course? Well, no, no, no. I mean, it, it's a symbol we, we dabbled with, but it's not particularly relevant. We don't use it on the course, no. Aha. Uh -huh. Ryan, you've just told me all about the moon symbols on the mask. Then you're claiming you don't know anything about the symbols on the flyer. It's all the same thing. Oh, oh actually, yes. I'm sorry, yes. I, yes, I do remember that. <laughs> so what did you know about Third Eye? Oh, uh, not much, really. Never came into contact with them. <laughs> the explanation was way too short. Ryan's definitely hiding something. Why are you always something. lying? Aha. According to the flyer, this Third Eye group was based at the Village Hall, is that right? Was it? And that's where you were based, wasn't it? Um, yeah, you said you invented the Atlas phrase, free to be free, while you were based at the Village Hall. So I did. So you must have come into contact with Third Eye at some point. You were using the same hall. Well, I'm afraid I haven't been entirely honest with you, Inspector. Go on. You see, Third Eye, Third Eye is, or was, Atlas under a different name. Sorry. Atlas Sorry. is Third Eye. In a new improved form, yes. And you ran Third Eye. With Dad, yes. So you must have known Liam. You didn't just meet him, did you? Yes, I knew him, Inspector, but don't get your hopes up. All of this has been thoroughly investigated and cleared up. You've been investigated about his death? They dropped the case. We didn't have anything to do with it. Well, when I say dropped the case, I mean a police investigation is one thing, but what the public thinks is another. They threatened to go public, and then James Bloody Wilson started distributing his flyers, and that was it. He never had no choice. Quite it was an entering. You had to change the name. <laughs> We'd he's, he's already getting... paid the family an out of court settlement. We thought that was an end. But then James, his cronies, they wouldn't leave it alone. So we had to close down, buy a new place, rebrand, so eventually we reopened here. As Atlas? As Atlas. And it worked? Uh, up to now, yes. <laughs> so you knew James Wilson too? We knew James, but he didn't know us as such. Oh, he was very quick to shoot us down, but he didn't do anything like actually coming to the course to see what he was about. 
So James wouldn't know that you were now running Atlas. Not unless he came to one of our courses. And how much of all that stuff was true? ECT machines, brainwashing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that that exists only exclusively in the mind of Mr. Wilson. All we do is make better business people. We challenge their prejudices and presumptions. Why don't you come along and see for yourself? The course starts in 15 minutes. Excuse me, Inspector. Hello. I can't come back now. Well, you have my car at the moment. All right. All right. See you later. Uh, that was that. I, I have to go back. You can come and meet him if you like. Well, I might come and have a chat. Come with me. To be perfectly honest, Dad's a great businessman, but he lacks imagination. He does, however, believe in the power of the individual when taught by the right teacher, of course. Ryan! In here. Just coming. He's through here. To whom do I owe the pleasure? Detective Inspector Jenks. I am investigating a death in the village. I believe you knew Kate Vine. Oh, I thought all this was dealt with, Inspector. You do know that Kate Vine was a gherkin short of a big mad. You do know. <laughs> you must forgive my son. I'm Inspector. sure they say that all the time in the UK. He still can't summon up the courage to come straight to the point. So what do you want to know? Well, a few more questions, if you don't mind. But I do mind. I'm a very busy man. Try asking an intelligent question. Like, do I mind being quizzed about a once promising student who turned into a useless drunk? Ryan, would you mind leaving us for a while? Mr. Kelvin, I'll go back to the centre. I have uh, one or two things to prepare. Um, tell me if you need me dead. You may begin, Mr. Holmes, although I'm not going to be able to help you. I don't have much to do with the course nowadays, so I can't give you any hard information. That's as maybe, but we No, that's as is. But if you want my opinion, I'd be quite happy to give it to you. So, uh, far away. Okay. Thank you. Wow, Paul said he doesn't take any prisoners. It's obvious. Have you ever heard of Salvia Divinorum, or Magic Mint? Sounds like it might be a drug. It's a hallucinogenic plant. Legal, as a matter of fact. I'm not a drug taker, Inspector. I have no enthusiasm for voluntarily poisoning your brain. And you've never seen anyone on the course taking it? Well, if someone had, they wouldn't have done it openly. We don't allow drugs or alcohol in our courts. We like to tell the students that success is the best drug. Whether you buy into that, of course, is another matter. How well did you know Liam? Liam who? Liam, who took his life. Oh. Well, as far as I remember, he was a good student, confident, outgoing. You didn't notice any problems? I believe he had problems at home. Were you there when he died? Yes. And afterwards? You didn't see him after the meeting? No. What was Liam like that night? No. Apart from being drunk, or possibly because of that, he seemed perfectly happy. He was drunk? Well, I assume the bottle in his hand contained whiskey and not lemonade. Lots of similarities to Kate, don't you think? Drinking, depression, is that normal for the students? People come into the Atlas course for quick solutions to their problems. And when they don't get them as quickly as they might have liked, sometimes their impatience gets the better of them. Aha! So if you don't allow drink or drugs onto the site, why did you allow Liam to drink whiskey all night? Well... 
We did give him various warnings. Did try to stop him, but uh, didn't work. <laughs> but you let him stay on the course? Yeah, well, we couldn't throw him out. This isn't a primary school, Inspector. We're not the police. We can't enforce these rules. If they pay their fees, they're entitled to stay on the course. And what if they want to take drugs? As long as they do it with discretion, frankly, I don't care if they want to wipe or inject paint stripper all over their faces. Do you store any alcohol at Atlas? No. Is there a kitchen? Why, do you want to go down there and check? Well, obviously you wouldn't mind if what you're saying is true. Of course I wouldn't mind. It's past the lavatories down the corridor, but you won't find any drugs in there or alcohol. Whether I find alcohol at Atlas or not, it probably isn't. What do you know about this? Looks like a mask. This is a setup for some you don't recognize it? Not particularly. It looks like a monarch mask. What's a monarch mask? Monarch is a fancy dress. Outfitters. Ryan goes there sometimes. You'll, you'll actually see where he keeps it all eventually. Yeah. Yeah, where does Jenks keep his stuff? What do you know about this? It's a freedom necklace. <laughs> It's a symbol we use um, sometimes on the courts. Little bird in cage flying away. Uh, freeing themselves from their past is the analogy. So do they get them when they join the course or something? No, 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 not as a rule. I think I bought one once as a present. Oh, not uh, for Kate by any chance? <laughs> no, not for Kate. I can't really remember who it was for, a birthday present maybe for one of the students. Which student? I have no idea. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you. I get the feeling I might be seeing a lot of Paul tonight. So the kitchen must be down the corridor there if what Paul said is true. Also, look, right now we're on Twitch's front page on the very right side because of based Sinister One working in Twitch. Shout out to Sinister One. Good job. Yeah, reminder every donation really helps us out. Well, there's a TV right there with a DVD player. Oh, yeah. I don't think anyone will mind if front I have a page quick look of Twitch. At this. We're doing this. <laughs> Here we go. Oh boy. Well, that was odd. Looked like someone pickpocketing. Woo! Why make a video of it? Okay. Alright, another really strong cutscene coming up. That's great. Probably one of my favorite. Yourself go. Feel your soul lifting. Then wait for the moment to break free. Then break free. <laughs> Excellent, Hannah. Well, <laughs> could you come back later? What's going on here? Please, leave. Sorry, Ryan, there's a few more questions I have to ask you yet, and, uh, time's ticking by. Leave. <laughs> okay. Okay.
So question to the chat. How based is Detective Inspector Jinx? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oops, I lost. So, those are Ryan's guitars, kept in a garage. Not really the best place to keep them. A few more questions, please. Thank you. What do you know about doll burning? Not on the course. <laughs> it's a ritual thing. It's uh, getting rid of things that you don't need. Throw it into the fire. And that's a good thing? Well, yeah, it helps you getting rid of things you don't need, so you can move on and take control again. So what are the masks for? They're just to help you get into the right frame of mind. Uh, just get you into the zone, you know, help with the trance. A trance? Yeah, yeah. It's like, um, it's like self-hypnosis. We do it on the course sometimes. It's just to help you get into the right frame of mind, you know? So you hypnotise yourself? How do you do that? Just stare into a mirror and chant something, you know, just say the same thing over and over again. Or you can just close your eyes and put yourself into a trance. Some people can do that. And that's safe? Well, yeah. Hypnosis doesn't work the way that most people think it does. You can't just be hypnotized if you don't want to be hypnotized. But you can learn to hypnotize yourself. What did you say it was called? Auto-hypnosis? Self-hypnosis, auto-hypnosis, same thing, really. I think Simon was a bit too quick to play down the role of auto-hypnosis on the course. I'll have to, uh, ask... What do you know about Ryan's guitar collection? I know he plays, because he tried to buy one off me. Do you play? I used to. I used to be in a band, but I was a singer as well, so I got away with it. Singer as well? Yeah, I used to sing in a band every night. But uh, sometimes it was in a pub, but usually at Rebecca's. What was that called? It was called Blackstone. And uh, this guy from a record company once came to see us, and he said the band was rubbish, but that I was good. So after that, I don't think they liked me much, and then we broke up after college. I can't hide talent. <laughs> What do you know about a student called Liam, committed suicide last year? Um, only that I didn't know him really well. Uh -oh. All right. Some of the sentences they like, you swear it could just be the same thing, but it's the same uh -huh. That band you sang in, Blackstone, who else was in the band? Um, just a few people from college. Including Liam? Yeah. Wrong, Why did you say you didn't know him? <laughs> no, it's, it's not that. I just thought you meant that I didn't know about his suicide. Did you? No, I was <clears throat> away on a holiday. When he died? Yeah, I only knew him through the band. She definitely knows more than she's saying. She was in a band with Liam, but didn't know about his problem? I'm not sure I believe you, Emma. Ask you a couple more things, please. Seen this before? The writing looks familiar, but no. Does he know what captions on this one? 
Yeah, I guess not. Thank you. Probably be back later. I turned them off. I turned them off. Alright, sorry. That's all they took. It must have been deliberate. Someone clearly wanted that back. Nice and helpful of them to leave a piece of evidence behind, though. Just a few more questions, if you don't mind. Have you seen this before? No, I don't think so. You don't recognize the shop? No. Is there someone else who works at Atlas? Someone who may have been there tonight? No. There's a cleaner. Comes at strange times, but then... He's a strange boy. Work experience. As a cleaner? Well, we did try him in accounts, but it didn't work out. Aha! Do you visit Monarch costumes a lot? No. I used to go in there occasionally. Why? But you do know the shop? Yes, of course I do. You see, Paul, I thought you said you didn't know where this bag was from. Well, maybe I do. This was used to put over my head, Paul, by a mugger. <laughs> Would you like to tell me something? Are you suggesting that I had something to do with your mugging? Did you? You really asked the most ridiculous questions. Of course I didn't. So why did you lie about the shop? Well, I didn't have anything to do with your mugging inspector, but I might know of somebody who did. Go on. Did Ryan mention Jason to you, the cleaner? Unfortunately, Ryan at some point told Jason that the DVD mustn't be removed from the site. So when he saw you take it, he simply thought that he was doing us a favour by uh, well, getting it back. He isn't exactly what you'd call one of Darwin's best examples. So what's on the DVD that's so special? <laughs> All right, it was something I did myself, a little stunt I pulled to amuse the students. What kind of stunt? I pretended to steal from the students. I emphasise the word pretended. The students knew all about it afterwards. Everything was a bubble. Steal from students? Why? We were doing a piece about pushing the limit, so I decided I... I would show them how it was done. Oh, don't look so serious, Inspector. I returned everybody's things immediately afterwards, no harm done. And when was this? Last year sometime. At Third Eye or Atlas? Third Eye, I think. And this was before or after Liam died? Well, since you'll probably find out anyway, it happened to be on the night that Liam died, as it happens. Before you ask. No. I didn't steal from him. He's so pleased to be yeah. think it's a good idea to encourage <laughs> students to steal, Paul? I wasn't encouraging students to steal. Policemen are so literal. Life is shades of grey, Inspector. Much as the force might like it. It doesn't divide neatly into blacks and whites. Now, if you don't mind, you'd have to excuse me for a moment. You know where the door is. I see he was quick enough to claim he didn't steal from Liam. What kind of stunt was that anyway? And Liam dying later the same night? It's just... What do you know about Paul Rand? Paul the Slime. You've obviously met him then? <sighs> yes, I have. What do you know about him committing a fake theft during one of the courses? What, about him going through people's bags? Yeah, he tried that thing on me as well, weirdo. So you were at Third Eye? Yes. Yes, I, I went there for a few months after college and I left because I hated it. I didn't know Atlas was the same thing. No one with Simon. Does Simon know that? No. I didn't want to burst his bubble, so I didn't say anything. So he doesn't know you went to Third Eye? 
No. Ah! So is that where you met Ryan as well? Yep. Right. What uh, What didn't you like about the course? Well, it was just... It was stupid. They just made you do things to other people and be abusive just to prove that you could, and I absolutely hated it. What sort of things? Oh, just stupid things. Nasty things to prove that you could do it. It was about not feeling guilty. And it was horrible. That's why I left. And is Simon doing all of this stuff now? No. No, I, I think they had to stop because it was just getting ridiculous. I think somebody got arrested or something. Very interesting. So, you witnessed Paul's money-stealing stunt, is that right? Yes. But you weren't there when Liam died? No. Don't quite understand that, you see, because Paul pulled the stunt on the same night. Liam died later that evening. Um, I, uh, I must have mixed up. So you don't know anything about Liam's death, even though you were there on that night? Mm, no. Emma. <laughs> I think you better explain, don't you? I mean, she's been wrecked this hard. It was the stupid so. course, wasn't <laughs> it? Go. <laughs> go on. Well, we were all told to do stupid things, and and then that thieving thing happened, and so. Take a breath, Emma. <sighs> Liam killed himself because of me. Why? Um. Liam had a a birthmark on the side of his face and no one would mention anything even though we all knew it was there and we all thought they all thought it was ugly so I thought I'd say something and I I even asked Paul if it was okay to say it and what did he say? he said he wouldn't mind Then Liam kills himself. Liam said because of me. Well, Emma, I'm quite sure you regret what you said, but I really don't think you caused Liam's death. There's always more to these things than meets the eye. It wasn't your fault. We can't tell Simon, please. Simon doesn't need to know. Don't worry. Thank you. I suppose it's possible that what she said led to Liam's death, but I really doubt it. I blame the Ram. Do you think Emma's criticism of Liam on that last night led to his suicide? I doubt it, Helen. Did you encourage <laughs> Emma to criticise him? I didn't encourage Emma to do anything. I mean, he told her what he told every student to do, to express themselves as they want to. It would be out of order to criticise them. However, I didn't expect her to criticize his He's snug as fuck here. Yeah, that's what it was. That's a decision she took herself. So you didn't know her well? No. Not at all. Aha. You say you didn't know Emma, uh, yet you bought her a freedom necklace. I don't remember saying anything about buying Emma a necklace. So you didn't buy her one? So you did buy her one. <laughs> so that means you must have known her, and quite well too. Stop me. Oh my god, you would destroy <laughs> everyone. Look, I've been around <laughs> Because, yeah, the past few days he's been playing Mafia and Werewolf and in the admit, back, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, lying going on, and Jinx would just shit on him. It was a stupid mistake, but that's all it was. So you're saying you tried it on with her? No, I didn't try it on. I bought her a necklace. I'm not aware that there's a law against buying presents, unless, of course, the... Third Reich 
has been elected while I was at the bridge party. <laughs> Emma was old enough to make decisions for herself. And as a matter of fact, she decided that she didn't want to be bothered with an old fool like me. So nothing happened, no mistakes, nobody got hurt. All right. Like father, like son. No surprises there. I wonder how many students Paul has tried it on with. Is anything locked in this town? <laughs> That'll come in handy. Don't know why I never remember to buy one. All oh, this steel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes me happy, yeah. <laughs> You guys want the blue filter right now, too? Totally not. like someone's been trying to make a point. Ask about a few more things, please. Do you know what uh, these are? Oh yes, that's my old car. Uh, it was vandalized. Um, I took those for the insurance company. Where did you find those? At the pub. Uh, you know who did this? <laughs> yes. A girl called Lisa Blint. She was on the course, a very strange girl. And why did she write the words devil worshippers all over your car? Well, she was a very strange girl. She had a lot of psychological problems. Uh, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, Inspector. I, I mean, she she took a dislike to the cause for some particular reason. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And um, she asked for a refund. I declined. And she decided to spray her disapproval all over my car. Odd thing to spray, isn't it, though? Devil worshippers? Well, she was a very odd girl, Inspector. Uh, maybe she thought it was a way of getting back at us. I had no idea. Did Rebecca know about it? Well, yes, she did, but I, was, I wasn't about to unleash Rebecca on her. She can be quite fierce sometimes, you know. And I mean, the girl wasn't vindictive. She had psychological problems. She lives in the village, actually. Uh, the run-down house at the end of the lane. Can't miss it. Really? Right. Thank you. Thank you. Probably be back later. Could that be where Lisa lives? Rundown house at the end of the lane. That's what Ryan said, wasn't it? Is it Lisa? Yes. Uh, Inspector Jenks, I'm investigating an incident in the village. I wonder if I could ask you a few questions. What sort of incident? I'd rather come in and discuss it if that's all right with you. I promise I won't take long. I'll just go in here, yes? I have to go out in a minute. Oh, oh, look, I, I can come back later. I might not be here. What did you want to ask? I just wanted to ask you, did you know Kate Vine? No. Right. Well, I heard that you're familiar with Atlas, the uh, life skills training company. What do you want to know about Atlas? Well, I heard you reacted badly to it. Of course, I reacted badly. So would anyone. Now, why do you say that? Because they're devil worshippers. Devil worshippers? They're making demons appear. They're tricking everybody. They're getting people to join up, and then they're putting demons inside them. You can see them. See who? Demons. <laughs> Where could you see them? 
In the mirrors. An atlas. Any mirror. You can't get rid of them. They stay inside you. So, how did you get rid of them? I didn't. You still see them. I just don't look. I put all the lights on. Make sure it's all bright. I put them on, and I need to look in the mirror. There's clearly a dark space in the back. If I make sure everything is bright, I just see myself without seeing the other person. Who is the other person? She's like me, but older. It's like her eyes sink in. She's all wrinkled, with a wrinkled mouth, like she's dying. And then I realize I'm her. I'm not me anymore. I'm her. I'm sorry, I have to go now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just stay in my house. Leave <laughs> the light on, okay. Mm, she could. She just said she wants to be like some more. Oh, so. A couple more questions, if that's okay. Has devil worship ever been part of the course, Ryan? <laughs> Am I correct? I'm assuming that you have spoken to Lisa Blit. You would be. She's been telling me all about the Atlas obsession with Satanism, Ryan. Then if you've met Lisa Blit, then you will have worked out for yourself that she has a very vivid imagination. She also has psychological problems, diagnosed psychological problems, as a matter of fact. So when did she get the idea that you lot were, um devil worshippers. I really have no idea. The girl is insane. She's frightened of her own shadow, bless her. She actually thinks that demons are possessing her even now. You really can't trust a word she says. So you are saying there has never been any devil worship at Atlas? I don't even know what devil worship is, Inspector. It's not something I particularly know anything about. I certainly don't recall anyone ever having worshipped the devil at Atlas. We even tried to help the poor girl by paying for some treatment, but she didn't want it. Really? It's not easy to offer someone help when they think that you're the problem. Have you seen one of these before? I believe that uh, looks like a scrying mirror to me. You have seen one before? Hmm. Well, I, I, I used to have one myself, actually, along with lots of other bits and pieces of that nature. Silly things, you know. Really? Yes, I, when I was in my teenage years, <laughs> I had quite an obsession with that kind of thing. I, uh, I was a very somber child, and well, not that you could tell, always playing fantasy <laughs> games, reading books about that kind of Malarkey, you know. What sort of books did you read? Well, uh, books on black magic, not the chocolates. <laughs> um, witchcraft, satanic rituals, that kind of thing. I read out of but you're not into that sort of thing now. <laughs> of course I'm not. Uh, I mean, I don't need to believe in the supernatural inspector. The natural world is far more interesting. Don't you think so? <laughs> Aha. So, you used to read a lot about voodoo and satanic rituals, but you don't know anything about devil worship? Well, obviously, I just meant we don't worship the devil. We're not devil worshippers here at Atlas, Inspector. Ridiculous. But the point is, Ryan, that you claim not to know anything about it, but admitted you were obsessed with it when you were younger. Are you sure none of that made its way onto the Atlas course? And that Lisa 
isn't basing her beliefs on anything within that course? Lisa isn't basing her beliefs on anything other than her own imagination, Inspector. Look, we do use some techniques that some students find difficult, disturbing. We encourage them to see things differently, that's all. And some people simply aren't up to that. Some people, like Lisa, uh, that's why we introduced the aptitude test. What's the aptitude test? This. We ask students to fill in an aptitude test. Uh, medical history, psychological issues, that kind of thing. Any medication that they have used in the past. Any medication that they currently are using. Here, take a look. Basically, it's just to try and make sure that we don't get another Lisa. Has it worked? Well, touch wood so far, yes. Can I keep a copy of this? Hmm. Ah. I wonder how much importance they actually give to this test. And what are they doing that's so disturbing anyway? A few more questions, please. Can you tell me a bit about this? Please. Uh, it's the Atlas Aptitude Test. What do you want to know? What does it test, exactly? It's a test uh, we introduced to make sure that any students didn't have any major personality problems, skeletons in the cupboard, so to speak. We introduced it because we had a little bit of a problem with one of the students. Hmm. Lisa. You are well informed. And what do you think it was that disturbed her? I believe that the course proved to be too demanding for her. Uh, we discovered that she had one or two psychological problems and she couldn't handle it. And did you change anything else on the course apart from introducing the uh, test? Uh, we increased the entrance age to 21. Well, it wasn't much, but it's about the only thing we could do. We didn't want another Lisa. We didn't want students turning around and suing us, did we? Can you tell me more about the auto-hypnosis techniques used on the course? We don't use hypnosis on the course. Not at all? Not anymore. So, how was it used? Hypnosis is probably the wrong word, Inspector. It's nothing to do with the trances or things like that. It was... It was meant to force... <coughs> to help students. Did you force them? <laughs> you can't force anybody into being hypnotized. You have to want to be hypnotized. It's not something out of your control. You can't be hurt or damaged in any way by hypnosis. So you've never put pressure on students to enter into hypnosis? It would be impossible to do so. Aha! So nobody has ever been affected by auto-hypnosis, except Lisa. Hypnosis wasn't the problem, Inspector. Lisa was the problem with Lisa. That's why we introduced the test. But the hypnosis was the trigger, wasn't it? Lisa arrived on the course believing we were all devil worshippers. She was nuts to start with. We didn't make her like that. Well, as far as I can tell, Paul, you've had one student accuse you of devil worship and two others commit suicide. Some of your students aren't having a very good time on this course, are they? Nonsense. Kate was enjoying every minute of it. She couldn't get enough of it. Really? She was full of the joys of life. Bubbly, confident, flirty. With whom? You mean with whom? With whom? <laughs> Including me, as I remember. Really? And uh, did you respond? I don't get into relationships with students, Inspector. Company policy, it's not professional. Interesting admission that Kate flirted with him. There's no way Paul would have turned down an opportunity like that. So you avoid relationships with students, except for Emma, who you tried to date. Oh, come on, Inspector. That was a long time ago. And what about Kate Vine? 
Did you try to date her or not? Oh, don't be so ridiculous, Inspector. Kate was an exceptionally clever girl. She knew exactly what she wanted and she knew how to get it. You mean that Kate approached you? It wouldn't surprise me if she was playing everyone in the group. Kate had more enemies than you'd think. She was a very, very manipulative young woman. Ten o'clock, it's getting late. I'm going to have to pick up the pace if I'm going to solve this by midnight. Yeah, you can buffer all of them. You can hold it down. That's like pure speed running. It's pure, it is. This Problems. Interesting. I'll ask you a couple more things, please. The cupboard downstairs, there's a lot of unopened stuff in it. Is there? Prescriptions. Made out to you. Oh. They're just spare painkillers. The chemist always gives us too many. He's a friend of the family. In the UK, chemist is what would be uh, called a pharmacist here. Aha! So, you don't take any medicines except for prescription painkillers. Well, they're not actually for me. They're Ryan's. Um, for some reason, a chemist always makes them out to my name. He's a an old gentleman. Does Ryan need prescription painkillers? Yes, he's got arthritis. Really? He's young to suffer from that, isn't he? He doesn't have it badly, but he does need medication from time to time. What medicine is it? I can tell you, to be honest. Ryan will know. So Ryan's the one using the prescriptions. I think I might have a word with him, work out exactly what this medicine is. Simon? Probably nothing important, but at this stage, I need all the clues I can get. I think the chat doesn't have enough jinx posting. More questions, if you don't mind. <laughs> Is this yours? Yeah. <laughs> Like, if you're going to talk That's about God-tier memes, Where's like... Where's the Just outside. Right. Oh, it must have come off when uh, Nathan dropped my keys off. Uh, he was borrowing my car. That's very trusting. Yeah, I suppose it is. I, I am a bit too trusting, really. It's a new car as well. Doesn't want it back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the bike outside? Oh, that's my cousin's. He lent me it. Uh, I need to buy a new lock for it, though. So it's your bike at the moment? Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's no bus service to speak of around here, so it's really the only way to get around. Aha. So the bike's the only way you can get to work, yes? Yeah. What's wrong with the car? No, I can't drive the car yet, can I? I don't have my license. Right. I got a windfall from an insurance payout. Uh, just figured I'd buy something sensible with it straight away instead of wasting the money. What was the insurance payout? Uh, it was for a laptop. It got stolen down at Atlas. At Atlas? Well, they didn't break in. They, I think they just walked in and took it. The laptop was in a storeroom, but I think the lock was broken, to be honest. It doesn't sound like they're taking their security very seriously. Uh, actually, it got a lot better after that. I think I'll check it anyway. 
must have been a very nice laptop to be able to buy a car with the insurance. Or a very cheap car. Might have to have a talk with Ryan about his security measures. Is an Alienware laptop? A <laughs> uh, few more questions, if you don't mind. Were you at Atlas when Simon's laptop was stolen? Oh, I believe I was, yes. It was taken from the storeroom in the hallway. Was it ever recovered? No, we didn't catch anyone. We're quite exposed out here. Uh, somebody could just have wandered along the lane, seen into the storeroom. It's not particularly secure. They could have been in and out within minutes. Uh, that's why we advise people to keep their valuables with them. You can't be too careful these days, Inspector. Tell me about your arthritis. Oh, you found out about that. <laughs> well, yes, I'm old before my time. <laughs> That's very unlucky to have it so young. Well, I take a lot from life, Inspector. And sometimes life likes to give you a little bit back. I mean, it's not too bad. It's not too debilitating. It's mainly uh, some in my right hand, some in my left hand. It's not particularly a problem. Uh, makes it difficult to hold small things, though. What do you take for it? I uh, get a prescription painkiller. How often do you need that? Not often, as and when, as and when. I keep some here, I keep some at home. It's not a problem. Have you ever heard of Salvia Divinorum? No. Yeah. Um, what is it? It's a hallucinogenic plant. A legal one. At least for the moment. I've no interest in drugs, Inspector. <laughs> My job. That's the only drug I need. As trite as that may sound. Do you know any students who may have used hallucinogens? No. No. My students aren't interested in that kind of thing. Besides, no one is allowed drugs or alcohol onto the site. I don't think anyone has ever brought drugs to Atlas. Do you have any medicines on site at all? No, we're not allowed. Insurance purposes. Aha! So, you don't keep any medicines on site at Atlas? No. Except your prescription painkillers? Well, these are not available to the students. But they are kept on site. Yes, but they're locked away. They're kept in the storeroom. Nobody would have access. You're sure about that? Absolutely sure. And what are the painkillers, Ryan? <laughs> painkillers. Uh, just painkillers. Normal painkillers. Paracetamol. Codeine. Morphine. Well, all right. They're morphine tablets, yes. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, come on, Inspector. I know what you're thinking. There's no way Kate could have had access to them. Because they're in the storeroom. Well, not just that. She wouldn't have even known about them or where they were. Sure about that? Yes. So it is morphine Ryan's taking. The pieces are starting to come together. Now I just have to work out how Kate got hold of it. If it was Ryan's morphine she got hold of, of course. Aha. So the storeroom isn't particularly secure, yet you keep your morphine tablets in there. I thought you said no one could get access to the morphine, but they could quite easily, couldn't they, Ryan? I didn't mean that storeroom. I meant a different storeroom. I keep them in there. OK. So where was it locked up? It's upstairs. It's got a combination lock on it. Nobody could have access to it except me and Dad. Nobody. I might have a look at that, if you don't mind. Don't mind at all. A combination locked room, I see. Well, I might have a look around for that. See how secure and combination locked it really is. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> Welcome to the mirror room. This exercise is all about identifying the difference between the image one presents to the world and one's real self, which lies deep in our unconscious. As you move through the network of mirrors, practice seeing yourself as a stranger. 
The more you separate from your persona, the more aware you will become of your true desires and ambitions. Chant with us. I am free from my image. I am free from my past. I am free from myself. I am free from my image. I am free from my past. I am free from myself. I am free from my image. I am free from my past. I am free from myself. This exercise involves the use of liberation masks. You have now completed Module 1. Module 2 covers boundary testing, threshold testing, and extreme testing. Please extreme. read the notes carefully before attempting the module. Aha! Oh, that's not right. That's not where I want to go. Couple more questions, if that's okay. Do you know about the mirror room at Atlas? Yeah. What's it used for? Well, it's mainly for the auto-hypnosis module. Uh, you go in and you stare into the mirror and you go into a trance. Then when you're ready, you come back out. So you just go in whenever you want to? Oh, no. Um, there's certain times when you're allowed in and uh, only they know the combinations anyway, so you can't really get in. You don't know the combination? No. He's lying. I uh, think you dropped this outside. Someone you know. Oh, this is just this is just from some IT guy I met. Uh, I don't need it. Enough. I uh, noticed some numbers on the back. Do you need these? I don't know. But what is it? Uh, one nine zero five. Oh yeah, yeah. That's just that's just a, a pin or something. It's okay. I can remember it. So not an offshore savings account or anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's uh, it, it's not important. Why are you always lying? <laughs> Aha! So you didn't know the combination to the locked mirror room? No. Except you've written it down, haven't you? This is the combination to the mirror room, Simon, that you wrote. It isn't a pin. It's a combination. Yeah. <laughs> you see, this sort of thing makes me suspicious. <laughs> what are you doing in there that you do not want anyone, including me, to find out? It's just part of the course, isn't it? I just, I just wanted to go in there when I was ready. On your own? You didn't give a number to anyone else? No. Simon, there was morphine kept in that room that might have played a part in Kate Vine's death. Did Kate have the number? <laughs> yes, okay. okay. Uh, we both went in. Together? We were trying to outdo each other. We, we both tried to morph in. What do you mean, trying to outdo each other? It's part of the course. To see how far you can push yourself. To see if you could do something you wouldn't normally do. When was this? A few months ago. How often did you try it? Only that once. I'd never do it again. How about Kate? I don't know. Sorry. So that's how Kate got the morphine. But what exactly does this testing involve? Could this have been what killed Kate? Eleven o'clock. Just an hour left to solve this thing. <laughs> He has to go to work tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave this murder alone. Man. God. God. <laughs> All right, I gotta go. So James is interested in poppy pods, is he? I think he's got some explaining to do. The funny thing is we're not going to talk to James. <laughs> so he doesn't have any explaining to do. 
Which isn't surprising because he's probably high off his ass right now. <laughs> Few more questions, please. Thank you. Odd question, but have you ever seen anyone handling dried poppy pods? Poppy pods? As in, for opium? No. Though, James did have opium tea once, I think. Where did he get it from? Oh, I don't know. I didn't ask. James does his own thing. What does opium tea taste like? Well, I don't know. I didn't try it. Really? I didn't want to risk it, did I? But I went to hospital once, uh, I, I had codeine, and I went into anaphylactic shock. The doctor said it was um, an opium derivative, apparently, so... Aha! You and Kate took morphine in the mirror room. That's what you said, isn't it? Yeah. But you're allergic to opiates, Simon. Opium. You didn't take the morphine at all, did you? Well, no. No, I didn't. And Kate did, though. I thought you were trying to outdo each other. That was the point, wasn't it? <laughs> we weren't trying to outdo each other as such. Go on. <sighs> Ryan wanted me to test Kate. To see how far she would go to be prime candidate. What candidate? Prime candidate. It, it means the best person in the group, basically. What do you mean, tester? But you do it in pairs. One person's the tester, it's me. And the other person's the... Victim. Well, it's not like that. <laughs> it's completely consensual. It's just boundary testing. Ryan wanted me to test Kate. Because they thought she was the best student. Well, maybe. I... I don't know. I just did what I was told, okay? Except you decided to give her morphine. To break the law. Well, I can't change that now, can I? She didn't die of a morphine overdose, did she? She died because she drowned. But she drowned for reasons that aren't clear. Atlas seemed to have this all neatly worked out. If Simon's telling the truth, Atlas are lighting the fuse and then retiring yeah, to a safe distance, like letting me. students test themselves and push themselves to their limits while avoiding all comeback. Is this what happened to Kate? Not like fake physical harm. Just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. You can push it all the way in, Tom, if you want to. <laughs> Excellent, Tom. Excuse me. <laughs> Would someone care to tell me exactly what's going on here? Don't come any closer. That man needs a doctor. No, he doesn't. <gasps> I don't need a doctor. I'm fine. Go away. What is this? A test. Of what? What does it look like? It's a threshold test. A pain threshold test. I thought, uh... You were supposed to be good at working things out, Inspector Jenks. Oh. And so this would be for Atlas, would it? Kyle? You disappear now! It's not a good idea to talk to a police inspector like that. Do it to make you! It's okay, Tom. Mr. Jenks won't be bothering us anymore. Don't make any rash commitments. <laughs> well, well. You really should take more care of your things, Ryan. Is your keys, Kyle? No. <laughs> <laughs> So that's threshold testing, is it? Sticking a skewer through your hand? I could just ask Ryan or Paul directly about this, but I think I'll bide my time. See what I can do with this key fob first. <laughs> Not gonna lie, this fucked me up the first time, because I was like, wait, oh yeah, Britain, it's on the other side. Yeah, just steal. I'm surprised you didn't just take the whole car, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Always nice to have Bingo. a Bingo. <laughs> well, Ryan, what have you been up to? Be very interesting to see how he explains this one. Ask you a couple more things, please. <laughs> Would you like to explain <laughs> what this is, please, Ryan? Five hundred pounds intended for Kate. It fell out of your car. At least I assume that's your car on the driveway at Brandon House. I suppose so. So why were you going to give Kate five hundred pounds, Ryan? It was just a little incentive, that's all. Just a little incentive. Not very little, Ryan. Five hundred pounds. <laughs> she was a... Uh... A very good student. We we heard that she was leaving. We wanted to give her something. But you didn't. Well, obviously not. Are you sure there wasn't any other reason you might want to give her this? Personal reason? No! Well, I'd like to keep hold of this for a little while, if you don't mind. Well, don't consider it a bribe, will you, Inspector? Now! Tell me what a prime candidate is. You're learning a lot, aren't you, Inspector? <laughs> prime candidates are simply the best students. The ones with the most potential. And what benefits do they get from that? Well, they get the top job. Which he never is. stops. Well, we have a deal with various multinationals. We train students to be exceptional, truly exceptional. <laughs> And they get a wonderful top job. It's a very simple deal. And how do you decide who the prime candidate is? Do you test students? No. Did you ever, say, ask Simon to test Kate, for instance? Oh, you've actually been speaking to Simon, haven't you? I really wouldn't trust anything that Simon Thompson says. You know, he spent the best part of two months trying to undermine Kate. No, 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 no. Now, Simon Thompson, it really isn't my place to speculate, but uh, if you're looking for motives, Inspector, uh, he certainly had a few motives, I, uh, more than I. A motive to kill her, do you mean? Now, that's very interesting, Inspector. Well, that's up to you to decide her. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. There's the way out of it. Can you tell me about auto-hypnosis? No. What would you like to know? Do you use it on the course? We dip into it occasionally, but uh, it's not a major feature of the course. I would say that, well, a minority of the students know how to use it, but the majority wouldn't know and have a clue. It's not a requirement of the course? No, not at all. We don't, we don't ask people to do things that they're not comfortable with. There's no bribery, no coercion. Uh, we're thinking about phasing auto-hypnosis out, actually. What's the reason for that? Uh, well, to be perfectly honest with you, Inspector, it doesn't actually work very well. <laughs> Aha! So, students aren't coerced or bribed in any way, except Kate. I'm not sure what you mean. You said you were going to give Kate the £500 as an incentive. That's coercion, isn't it? I really don't think you could call it coercion, Inspector. <laughs> it was an incentive. That's all. A little encouragement. So how often <laughs> do you use incentives? OK, incentive is probably the wrong word. The money was just to see how Kate would respond. It was part of her assessment. Assessment? We have to assess students as they progress. We'd, we don't use conventional methods like sitting an exam or anything like that. People pay for this course per session. We have to know if they're committed or not. So you're assessing their progress and testing their commitment? Yes, we are. We have to. This is a business, not a charity. So Ryan's claiming the money was part of Kate's assessment. And did this assessment also involve threshold testing, I wonder? Or was the money for something else? Aha! Well, which one is it, Ryan? Do you test students or not? Well, some of them, yes! Including Kate? Yes! Why was she being tested? She was being tested because... 
because we wanted to see if she was good enough to become prime candidate, okay? So Kate was in the running to be prime candidate. Yes! And did you ask Simon to test her? Yes, I did. But I didn't ask him to do anything stupid. He knew it was against course rules. How far did you ask him to push her? I didn't ask him to push her. I asked him to test her. There's a huge difference! <laughs> If Simon decided to give her too much caffeine or morphine or whatever, that's his responsibility. So if he did anything wrong, it was his own responsibility. He did it with his own mind and his own hand. Jinx just has his cool Nothing to do with it. <laughs> Fifteen minutes into contradiction, one show. He gives you that one. Midnight. And still no suspect, unless you count everyone I've interviewed. It's no surprise that Ryan wants to avoid any suggestion of being responsible for Was Kate a prime candidate? Well, as Ryan has probably already told you, yes, she was. Did you ask Simon to test her? Yes, it's company policy. Leaders don't get involved. And it covers your back, of course. And nobody knows the students better than they do, Inspector. I want to quit for the much better to let them just work it out among themselves. It isn't very professional to force students to test each other to the point where one of them gets killed, Paul. We don't force students to do anything <laughs> that they don't want to do, Inspector. So you don't force them to be tested? No, we don't encourage anybody to hurt or offend anybody else here. You don't use threshold testing, for instance? No. If Simon Thompson went too far with Kate, that's his responsibility, not ours. He's the one you should be speaking to, if truth be told. I don't trust him myself. Can you tell me about the room with the mirrors at Atlas? The one with the combination lock? How did you get in there? I was given the code for the combination. Why, right? Well, nobody else is uh, allowed to know the code, are they? I'm not in theory. So how is the room used on the course, then? It's a meditation room where the students can reflect on themselves, literally. And what about the CD? Well, that helps, too. It's part of the program. So you send the students into the room, they put the CD on, they stare into the mirrors. And how long does this last for? Until the CD finishes or they fall asleep. What else would you like to know? Aha! You say you don't endorse threshold testing, that's the phrase, isn't it? Yes. Except you do, Paul, because you told me that the students use that CD in the mirror room. I've listened to that CD, and it very clearly mentions threshold testing. You keep batting this away, Paul. We don't really use hypnosis. The students aren't really tested. But I am this close to launching a full-scale investigation. Look, we get a kickback from these students, and they have to be exceptional. Of course we have to test them. That doesn't mean we do anything illegal. What do you think we do? Bump off the ones we don't like? Well, that depends on how far you push them, doesn't it? Well, we certainly don't kill them. Nobody here wanted Kate dead. I'm sure they didn't. But what do you expect, Paul, when you put students under that much pressure? She was a very, very valuable student. She was worth a lot to the business. Really? And how much would that be? Well, if you really want to know, 50 grand. She was worth 50 grand? Yes. What, you were selling her? Of course we were selling her. You don't get this, do you? We make perfect employees. Month after month. That's all we do. What do you mean, perfect employees? What big business needs, Inspector, more than anything else, is none of this altruistic, goody-goody crap. What we look for is people with ambition. No ethics. Push. Greed is good. All right? We don't deal with all this comfort stuff. The survival of the fittest. That's all there is. There's no higher purpose, no big plan. There's nothing at the end of the rainbow. New camera angle. Except what you have and you can enjoy in the here and now. And what do you enjoy now, Paul? <laughs> Even though to excuse me. Inspector, I'm a very busy man. I've got work to do. It's like, just try and count how many times Jenks lays the fucking smack down on people. I'll see myself out.
demand your father. <laughs> Shut the gate on your way out. Sound good. Are we into a, a morally scene here? bankrupt men are plotting to get rid of like, me. Uh, uh, it's uh, primo I don't have scene. any backup and <laughs> I don't even have a mobile scene. phone. This is potentially quite bad. And what's Kyle got to do with it? I think I might make my way over to Atlas while Ryan isn't there. It's so funny Maybe when lock myself in. skips because you just don't see this guy until this part. <laughs> so it's just like, who's this guy? <laughs> Prove to me that you're man enough to do this, girl. And then you can deal with that ridiculous police inspector. What is this? What the hell? Scotland Yard. Not hell. Hello, Ryan. <laughs> Inspector, what are you doing here? Inspecting. So, uh, come on. Let's have it. I don't think you'd understand, Inspector. The best thing that you can do is turn around, go away, and leave us to it. Knife. What? That knife gives me a perfect right to stick my nose in, investigate, and interfere. <laughs> this is all part of the Atlas course. It's a physical endurance exercise. <laughs> <laughs> the knife, Kyle! Kyle. Drop it! Not looking 100% brilliant for you, Ryan. Oh, please, Inspector, you've poked your nose into Atlas's affairs enough times to know that imaginative flair is part of the course's success. Our lessons are reinforced by a unique emotional experience. Terror? It's an extremely evocative tool. Well, it's a good job you're not in charge of the national curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> now look, Inspector, I know what you're trying to do. I know what you're thinking. But believe me, Atlas had nothing to do with the deaths of those people. Eyewitness account of a satanic sacrifice in the woods. That's not what we call circumstantial evidence, Ryan. Simon. Now, I saw Simon walking home with Kate last Friday after the meeting. Now, Simon had some strange idea that he was in the running to become prime candidate. <laughs> well, a knob of butter has more chance of becoming prime minister. Oh, wait. So are you tell oh. me... <laughs> Simon killed her. Well, it seems reasonable. It's likely, isn't it? any more likely than you, Ryan. Pig! Woo! Jake's laying that smackdown, damn. Literally, the smackdown. <laughs> He's just like, okay. <laughs> don't mess with James, dude. Just a few more questions, if you don't mind. <laughs> what would you say if I said it's been suggested that you were seen walking home with Kate after Atlas last Friday? What? By who? The same person who suggested that you wanted Kate out of the picture because you found out she was in the running to be prime candidate. Who said that? Just a question. Well, I didn't think I was in the running. It was Ryan, wasn't it? I am in no position to say. It was Ryan! Simon, <laughs> calm down. No, I can prove it. Kate's driving license, give it to me. Why? Kate's driving license, please. Sir. 
See that pattern on the tape there? Let me show you something. See this pattern? Now look at that. It's the same pattern. This has come from the same roll of tape as this. So? So there's only one person has tape like that. Ryan. The only one in the world. He gave me this piece of tape Very when I was in his office once. Only Probably place in the village why that has that Why has Kate's tape. driving license <laughs> got a piece of Ryan's fluid, tape on it? I have no idea, sir. Where did you find it? <laughs> oh, by the lake. That's obvious, isn't it? Ryan was testing her. He was doing a boundary test to see how much she would do, how far she would go to be a prime candidate. But it all went wrong. <laughs> okay. It's one of the things we do at the course, right? You give something that's important to you to someone else, then they go and hide it somewhere. It's to teach you to not be bothered when you lose something that's important to you, all right? Kate gives her driving license to Ryan. Ryan goes and hides it somewhere down the lake. Kate finds out, she goes down looking for it, probably drunk, and she falls in. I'm afraid I find that a bit far-fetched, Simon. <laughs> it makes perfect sense if you know anything at all about how Atlas works. But Simon, if you got the tape from Ryan, Kate could have got it from him. He told me he doesn't lend it out. He lent it to you. Oh, well, there it is. But I didn't kill her! <laughs> Do a lab test on the card! His DNA will be all over it. And what if yours is all over it? <laughs> it won't be! I didn't kill her! I'm sorry, just 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 give me a minute. I need I need some painkillers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he remembered. <laughs> Aha. Uh <-huh. laughs> yeah. He bounced. <laughs> Where did he go in such a hurry? Is he trying to act as suspiciously as possible? Now coming off as one of my favorite, probably my favorite cutscenes. Ask about a few more things, please. Have you seen patterned tape like this anywhere before? Oh, Ryan's got some. I know, because I borrowed it. When was that? A couple of months ago. Have you still got it? I don't think so. I haven't seen it since then. Time's going to come up somewhat soonish. Don't, you don't have to like wait on it, don't worry about that. It's nice to have an exact time here. Yeah, there's my default record. What is this? Let's just go through the window. No, no, no. There we go. Aha! You last saw that sticky tape two months ago, is that correct? Yes. So how come you used it last time week to, to take the over the broken window outside? Ryan and Jinx will be team. running across a field. Well, they run and they high five each other, and when you they see, high five, that's what the happens. reason I'm asking <laughs> is that it's exactly the same tape that was found attached to Kate's driving license, found at the scene. The tape that only Ryan has. Ryan, and of course, you. So what are you saying? Who's got the tape now? Do you know where it is? No. No, I don't know where it is. Why are you asking me about this tape? You seem nervous, Rebecca. Is there a problem? Well, you're practically accusing me of having something to do with that woman's murder, aren't you? I wasn't accusing you of anything, Rebecca. <laughs> Unless there's something you'd like to tell me. No, I wouldn't like to tell you anything. Okay, well, that's fine. Obviously, uh, we'll be swabbing everyone in the area for DNA, so if anything comes up on Kate's license, DNA traces. What'll come up? Nothing will come up. <laughs> right, I've had enough. I've got to get back. Rebecca! Would you like to explain to me exactly what is going on? Which bit? The fact that some leggy bitch was trying to steal my husband? Woo! I think you had better tell me what you know, Rebecca. Okay. You want to know what I know? Kate Vine 
seduced my husband and was going to blackmail him. Not only did she sleep with him, that whore did it just for his money. Our money. Our money. How did you work that out? I heard her. I knew it was her arguing with Emma Bowman. Emma was trying to talk her out of it. And how did she come to be at the lake? She dropped that driving license thing when she came in. She, she was drunk. She dropped her bag. I took it out to the woods and stuck it over the lake. And then I waited for her. When she came out, I... I told her where it was, that someone had just run off into the woods with it. You led her to the lake. She was reaching out over the lake to get it. I didn't do anything, she just fell in. But you let her drown. It was dark, I, I couldn't see anything, I couldn't help her. Really? <laughs> Did you try, Rebecca? Well, it was too late. She was just flapping about in the water. It was pathetic. She was making these gurgling sounds. And what did you do? I got a big stick. I just pushed her down with it until she stopped. <laughs> well, she was dead anyway. What did it matter? You killed her, Rebecca. But she slept with my husband. She didn't, Rebecca. What do you mean? You got the wrong girl. Who... <laughs> Emma. It was Emma. Rebecca Rand, I am arresting you for the murder of Kate Vine. You do not have to say anything, but anything you do say may be taken down and will be used in evidence against you. Do you understand? Yes. <laughs> so... It appears that Kate Vine's death was a tragic case of mistaken identity. But there are some loose threads here. What was Ryan doing with Kyle and that girl in yeah, the woods? Yeah, what were they doing? <laughs> interrupted. And what really happened to Liam last year? It seems I've only scratched the surface of Atlas and the Rand business empire. Trying to find out about Paul Rand's past is like peering into dense fog. He gives nothing away and covers his tracks with military efficiency. However, what is known is that Paul Rand has a lot of connections in high places. Politicians, celebrities, business leaders. Perhaps James Wilson's ideas weren't too wide of the mark after all. I get the feeling there's still a Don't. lot more to learn Don't. about the Rand business <laughs> empire. You're going to have to excuse us. There might Atlas be. Atlas is closed for they the are thinking about a sequel. Um, we'll be open again very soon. It's dependent upon, like... Thank you for your interest. Kickstarter, also like how well this game was responded to, which p people said that it was it was pretty positive. So it, yeah, it's so much fun. Like buy this game because I want part two. Like yeah. I want it now. <laughs> I am waiting. Oh yeah, Tim in there. Yeah, yeah, I'm waiting for Fallen to get ready on that. Because uh, I mean, he even says, um, you know, the ending's a little lackluster. You know, kind of like, oh the tape. It's very know? much like yeah, like an ep uh, it yeah. feels like an episode one to a like an episode <laughs> series ending. <laughs> And I, I want, like, come on, chat, do you want more of this shit? Come on. Yeah, he says that he, it's a very cut-down story of what he wanted to do. He wanted to add more, like, interactions. <laughs> right? Yeah, hopefully NASA 2017 will have a contradiction, too. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, eventually, eventually, hopefully, it comes out, because... How, just can't get enough of this spectrum. And yeah, that's the Tim Fallon who wrote the music for like a uh, million and a half, million and a half and yeah. yeah, like Solstice and, and even uh, even not not just NES games, but all of like later games. Rare stuff. Rare stuff. Because I mean, UK. UK. Yeah, like he, yeah, he's he's done a lot of good shit, and now he's he's painted this good shit, and it's it's primo, mm -hmm. and I want I want more. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Yeah. They had a really small budget. It's, a, it's surprising. Uh, yeah, like it's incredibly small. <laughs> very, very small. Probably most of it was spent on getting people out of the shop. Alright, get ready on time. And time. <laughs> <laughs> There's a contradiction, guys. Woo! Alright, man. Get in there. Cook, get in there. Yes. We did it. <laughs>
Yeah, see, your support is vital if we raise funding for a sequel. So, yeah, if, if NASA was to have donations for anything, it would be for Contradiction <laughs> 2. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Contact Tim Baum. Yeah. yeah. He makes us music, intro music and everything for this, uh, for NASA. Uh, we'll make a couple of for Contradiction 2. Yeah. Uh, I'll just show there. that it was, thank you. That was fun. Oh, man. Want to get uh, well, the open, so it I'm cheap as shit. Uh, Actually, wait, what has a tiny bird, right? Yeah. I just want to go. I don't know if Just to prove it was 100%. <laughs> 100%. There we go. What counts as 100%, by the way? Did we ever explain that? No. I don't even know why it's 100%. <laughs> I just, I, I think it's because you get all of the contradictions. I think that's all it is.